and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. In today's episode, we are going to get started with CDK for serverless. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices, subscribe in my channel in the red button below. I post videos on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, so let's get started. <laughs> something new uh, I've been trying out that is CDK. Uh, it's not new because it's been there for like over a year but I have never explored it until now uh, when I was talking with one of my guests Martin Beebe and he showed me the power of CDK uh, to build Fargate applications and then I was like wow I really need to try out. By the way his uh, talk is coming in the next week so stay tuned for that subscribe and all that things so you are reminded when that video comes out but yeah so i got inspired by by talking to him and i started trying it myself and i find that there was a lot of material and a lot of things out there to get started so i start building my serverless applications so the first thing i noticed that for making the typical application for serverless maybe cdk is not the optimal way at least in my opinion i way more efficient with some and it's kind of easier to build a typical api lambda dynamo thing combo with, with some but when we get to more um, non-serverless components then cdk starts shining so if we need to build an application with BPCs, RDS, so for example, one demo I wanted to do for a long time is to, well, not for a long time because it's been general for a few weeks, is the RDS proxy demo to show you how you can connect a Lambda function to an RDS proxy. But building that with CloudFormation, it's very, very painful. And when I saw how easy it is to do it with CDK, I was like, wow. Another thing I want to show you is how to do Lambda with a, uh, this Elastic File System that was announced a few uh, weeks ago as well. And also with CloudFormation is very painful, but with CDK is really nice. So those are videos that will be coming out in the future. But before doing that, I want to start from the beginning on building uh, serverless applications with CDK, showing you a little bit on where you can find the information and things like that. So let's go to the screen and get started. What I want to build is a simple app, API gateway, a Lambda function and a Dynamo. I will not put really a lot of code in that function. It will be just displaying hello or something super simple because that's not the point of the video, but I want to create the whole infrastructure. And I think with CDK is more complicated than using some. But I think making this video will open the door to do other things with CDK and serverless that it's way easier to do it with CDK than with serverless. So that's what I want to start from the beginning and get started. So the first thing you need to do is to install CDK. You can find the information on how to install it in their GitHub repo. CDK is an open source project, so everything is there. Make sure that you have uh, updated your um, CDK components because it's changing all the time. So make sure that you have the latest versions. What I'm showing you in the video is for sure not the latest version that you will be seeing. It's changing all the time. So to install it, just follow the instructions here and then configure your AWS account and you will have it installed. It's a node project, so it's as simple as running npm -E in your globals with the AWS CDK. No, nothing complicated. So what we are going to start is with a basic application. So I will create a new uh, directory and then I will initialize an application there. So let's copy that and go to the terminal. So I will do make dir CDK serverless get started. And then I will go CDK serverless get started and there I will paste this command. CDK init sample app is defined, it's the sample application, you will get everything you need, it's a template and then you need to find a language. I will be using TypeScript, it's as similar as JavaScript, so for me it's the easiest one to go. You can choose between all the languages supported by uh, CDK. So now it's installing and basically we will get a full application that if we deploy right away, it will be working. But 
I don't want to deploy it right away. I want to remove everything that it builds and just keep the structure and start adding my own components, the API gateway, the DynamoDB table and the Lambda function. So I will open this in Visual Studio Code and we can check what is inside. Let's make the font bigger and check what it has created for us. So the first thing in the bin folder, you will find the root of your application. So it needs to start from somewhere. And here is the name of our CloudFormation stack that is represented in this kind of module. The CDK serverless get started stack. If we have multiple stacks, we can define them here as well. And this is inside the stack definition is inside the lib. And here we can see that there is some resources that I will remove. There is a queue and a topic and we don't need it. So I will just remove everything. And in here we will write our infrastructure code, but we will get that there in a moment. Then I have my node modules and I have a test folder. This comes out of the box. Uh, basically these tests will not work after I deploy, so I might remove them as well. But if you want to know how is to write tests for uh, infrastructure, let me know. I have never used CDK in a production product in production, so I don't know how to write tests for infrastructure using CDK. But if you are something you're interested, I'm pretty sure I can find someone that can talk about that. So just let me know in the comment box below. Then we have our different files and the CDK configuration, the testing configuration, the node configuration, and yeah, some TypeScript configuration. Good. So this is the file that we are interested in. So I will remove everything and just leave this file. So we want API Gateway, Dynamo and uh, Lambda. So those are the first things that we need to import. So this is a uh, language. So we need to import the libraries and I will bring Lambda, Dynamo and API Gateway to our project. Then I need to go to the terminal and I need to add them in my uh, project because these are, uh, it's an old project. So I need to bring these modules over and I just do npm install and I add all these free modules. And then after that, we have the modules ready and we can start using them. So this takes a little while while it's downloading all the modules into our project and then we can start using. So the first thing I want to create is a Dynamo table. We will not really use it in our function, but I want just to create it so you can see it. Uh, Dynamo I will start because it doesn't have any dependencies with anything, so it's pretty straightforward to create. This is kind of nice because it creates the table for us with almost all the, uh, the faults that it can. So we just define the cons uh, constructor is called, uh, construct the dynamo construct and we give a name to the table in this case hello and then we define what is the name of our uh, partition key that is the main key the only thing we need in a, a nosql database in a dynamo database that is key and value we need the key and this is the type is a string of the name name and here you can see that we have some errors and this error is something I found out yesterday and I let it to show it to you so you can, uh, maybe you're having the same problems and you don't know how to debug it. So if you look here, I will remove this free, this is our package JSON, uh, where all the dependencies are listed in our node project. And you see that the last three packages we install are version 1.51 1. Uh, 1. and the one for the core is 150. So we just need to update that there. And then if I go to the terminal and do npm install, that will fix the problem for us. So if you're facing that problem, the uh, CDK version uh, changes all the time. You might need to um, update it. So whenever you're getting the latest packages from the internet, then yeah, those are coming as well. So that's something I leave there for you to know. So now if we save, then we will see this happening. So I will put here, well, it doesn't, Oh yeah, I need to put it out of there. It should be inside the constructor and here we const table. And there we have our Dynamo table. Now let's create our Lambda function. And we do the same, we create a new construct using this uh, Lambda function. We pass a name, Dynamo, Lambda handler, whatever. Then we have defined the runtime. We say where the code is 
and where the handler is and then we can pass environmental variables. This might look very similar to some or other things in the same things that we need to pass. Uh, so now we said here that there is this a folder called um, functions so we need to maybe call uh, created functions and it should be in the root so I will move it there and inside here we have a file called function js and inside here we will have our method that is doing the kind of whatever the handler is doing and I want to keep it as ridiculously small as possible so I will just print hello in the screen nothing fancy because this is not the point of this video but you can see that there is a functions folder with a function file with a handler method that's basically what we want and then if we want to get access to the table name we could get it from the environmental variables so now we have the lambda, we have the table, and we want to write on the table in the hypothetical case our function is doing something interesting. We need to give permissions to the function, and for that we are using the, this method that is a table grant read and write data. So this is the cool thing of um, these types language that you can see what is available so if I type grant you can see that there is full access read access read write data read stream blah, blah, blah. there is all the kind of policies defined there for us so this is kind of nice we don't need to write them and it's all kind of auto documented there so this is something I really like from these type languages so after we have that then we want to have the API gateway and for the API gateway the first thing we want to do is to create an API gateway and I will create an API gateway that is uh, basically called hello API and here I need to start adding roots to it so I will add a root with one method and one path and I could add as many as I want with uh, that they're integrated to lambda so basically this is as simple as doing this api.root and then add the path for hello and the method get and then you just do the lambda integration there with the lambda that we just wanted so if we want to add more um, roots then it's just as easy as say api root and then add uh, blah 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 so and the last thing we can do is create outputs so we can see things in our um, when we deploy we want to see the URL, then we can just add this output that will get the URL for the API gateway. And yeah, that's basically all the infrastructure. It's a little longer, than what we'll, we'll do with some to create this type of infrastructure, but still it's pretty readable. And I think this starts shining a lot when we are doing things with VPCs and more complex stacks that are not only using serverless components. So let's deploy this and see what happens. So I will do um, CDK deploy. I could do CDK thinth, and this will print us the CloudFormation that this will output. Uh, this is kind of handy if we want to uh, do some kind of CI CD that we get the CloudFormation and then we deploy the CloudFormation independently. But from our computer, we just do CDK, CDK deploy. And this will start deploying. First, it will ask if everything that is uh, being created is good for us. So we can uh, see all the resources that are being created for us. And we can review them and we can see all the different permissions that are coming as well. So that's good. And we can say yes. And then this will start deploying our application for us. So it takes a little while. It's first it's doing the synth for us and then it's deploying it using the CloudFormation service. So there is no much, uh, nothing new there. It's like some that it does the, also the, um, the conversion to CloudFormation and then it gets deployed with CloudFormation. So if we go to our AWS account to CloudFormation, we should be able to see this CDK serverless get started thing here. And we can start seeing that there is things being created and they're in process. So it takes a little while while it happens. And when it's ready, then we can try it out with Postman and see if it's working. 
but it's a very very simple way to create a super simple application and in from the lambda perspective from the code nothing really changed everything stays the same because there is nothing new there so you can write your lambda functions as you used to the only thing that it changed is how we define the infrastructure so that's kind of what i wanted to show you today so let's wait for this to complete and and then we can check it out good so we got our output here that well <laughs> kind of cdk also output it for us so we don't need to worry and we can copy that in postman um, we can put hello and then we can see that we get the hello back so if you want to start learning these things to do go to the aws repo and check it out and read it through another thing you can do go to the aws cdk documentation and read it through there is a lot of things there uh, on how to do things a lot of examples that you can basically copy paste if you are very lazy and you don't want to do anything, you can go to this project called CDK Patterns. There is, I don't know how many patterns there. Divine, there is an also kind of open source thing. You can add your own patterns here. And there is many here that are solving simple pro problems or common problems, I will say, because some of them are not simple at all. Um, you can check it out as well and build your CDK infrastructure just by copying pasting. And as well, I will leave this repo I just created in uh, github as always so you can access it and tell me how you feel about cdk i will be doing in the future videos about it because there is a lot of topics that i really want to get into with uh more advanced topics as i said working with bpcs and rds and things like that that i've been avoiding because i'm super lazy to write a cloud formation for that but now with cdk it's way easier so i will start showing you some more advanced demos i think uh, with CDK than with some, but it's also it's something I need to learn. I don't know much about it, so it's going to be interesting. I will be doing an interview where we will go into CDK and Fargate. I will leave it in the description box when it's available and also linked in the resources of this video so you can check it out. I will be talking with Martin Bibi and we will be learning about a lot of things about CDK in way more detail, but I want to do more things for serverless. So. Well, that was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and tell me what kind of use cases you would like me to see working on with CDK. Sure, don't tell me build EC2 machines. I will not go that track. Uh, but tell me about serverless use cases. What kind of things are you interested in? And if you would like to know more things about testing that infrastructure, also let me know in the comment box below. I will try to source someone that knows how to do it. But yeah, that's it for today, and I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao!